Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsor, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate the mysteries of God's love. Let us call to mind our sins and beg the forgiveness by which we are renewed and saved. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and to bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, our refuge in every danger, to whom we turn in our distress, in faith we pray, look with compassion on the afflicted, grant eternal rest to the dead, Comfort to mourners, healing to the sick, peace to the dying, strength to healthcare workers, wisdom to our leaders, and the courage to reach out to all in love, so that together we may give glory to your holy name. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, teach and urge these things. Whoever teaches something different and does not agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ and the religious teaching is conceited, understanding nothing, and has a morbid disposition for arguments and verbal disputes. For these come envy, rivalry, insults, evil suspicions, and mutual friction among people with corrupted minds who are deprived of the truth, supposing religion to be a means of gain. Indeed, religion with contentment is a great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, just as we shall not be able to take anything out of it. If we have food and clothing, we shall be content with that. Those who want to be rich are falling into temptation and into a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires which plunge them into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all evils, and some people in their desire for it have strayed from the faith and have pursed themselves with many pains. But you, man of God, avoid all this. Instead, Pursue righteousness, devotion, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Compete well for the faith. Lay hold of eternal life, to which you were called when you made the noble confession in the presence of many witnesses. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Why should I fear in all in evil days when my wicked ensnarers ring me round? They trust in their wealth. The abundance of their riches is their boast. Blessed the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Yet, in no way can a man redeem himself or pay his own ransom to God. Too high is the price to redeem one's life. He would never have enough to remain alive always and not to see destruction. Blessed the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Fear not when a man grows rich, when the wealth of his house becomes great. For when he dies, he shall take none of it. His wealth shall not follow him down. Blessed the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Though in his lifetime he counted himself blessed, they will praise you for doing well for yourself. He shall join the circle of his forebears who shall never more see light. Blessed the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. the Lord, my soul waits for His word. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus journeyed from one town and village to another, preaching and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. Accompanying him were the twelve, and some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward Cusa, Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their resources. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, in our first reading today, St. Paul warns Timothy against worldly possessions because material wealth could divert even the most fervent believer from the path of faith. And St. Paul even said, the love of money is the root of all evil. Take note, my dear brothers and sisters, that St. Paul did not say that money is the root of all evils. Even Jesus did not teach that. He said, the love of money is the root of all evil. When we begin to love money, when we begin to be attached to material wealth, when we begin to be attached to worldly possessions, we also begin to be corrupted by them. For love of money, we do everything and anything, even illegal and evil things. For the love of money, we could sacrifice almost everything and anything, even our own families and friends. And for the love of money, even religion could be used to earn, to become more rich. The love of money is the root of all evils. In our gospel today, we heard about the women who accompanied Jesus in his journeys. And these women provided for Jesus. They took care of the personal concerns of Jesus and his disciples. Probably they were the ones who cooked for Jesus and his disciples, washed their clothes, and did other chores for them. And this they did out of their own means. They used their own resources they use their own money, they use their own material wealth in order to support Jesus and his mission. This is what using material possessions properly is all about. It is using money for the good of others, it is using money for charity, using money responsibly. 
My dear brothers and sisters, how do we look at material wealth and money? How do we relate with these gifts? Do we always think of money? Palagi na lamang bang pera ang nasa isip natin? Are we so preoccupied with getting more money kapag ang ating iniisip ay palagi na lamang pera at pagkakaroon ng mas marami pang pera? Do we so value money that we almost worship it as God? Sinasamba na ba natin ang pera? How do we use our money? Do we use our money responsibly? Do we use our money only for ourselves? Sinasabi ba natin, e eh ako naman na naghirap dito, kaya para sa akin lamang ito. My dear brothers and sisters, in this time of crisis, while many people are having a difficult time to make both ends meet, there are people who simply waste money in luxury, who use money for their own benefit, who take advantage even of the situation in order to amass more wealth. During this time of pandemic, we have to discern how to use our money and our material possessions. Is it charitable? Is it responsible and even sensitive to waste money in things that are not necessary? Is it sensitive to the needs of those who are suffering to use money, millions of money, in campaign ads, in promoting oneself, habang marami ang nagugutom, walang trabaho, walang kabuhayan, baka may mga tao na labis-labis ang pera at sinasayang lang sa mga wala namang halagang bagay. Let us be more sensitive. People might be in need of our help. We are gifted in order to help them. My dear brothers and sisters, money is a gift from God. Material wealth is God's blessing. But we must not love them more than we love other people. We must not love them more than we love God. And worse, we must not love them as our God. The root of all the love of money is the root of all evil. Let us be careful, my dear brothers and sisters, because we become what we love. Full of hope and confidence, we make our prayer to God the Father, anxious for an increase of His presence in our life. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Church may continue to grow and be a symbol of justice, love, and truth in the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as a community, we may not be idle in our life of faith, but every day seek God 
even in our difficulties and trials, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The children may grow in the ways of grace and mature into Christ-like people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may be strengthened in their faith by uniting their sufferings with the suffering of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our beloved dead may reap the fruits of peace, joy, and serenity in God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray in silence for our personal petitions. We also remember the people who requested our prayers. In a special way, we pray for the communities of religious women, for their protection and for their healing. And we also pray for the intentions offered in this Mass. Heavenly Father, help us grasp the importance of the time in which we are living. Open our hearts to your word so that we may always bear fruit. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept, O Lord, the gifts we offer in this time of peril. May they become for us by your power a source of healing and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is Yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Act of Spiritual Communion 
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, from whose hand we have received the medicine of eternal life, grant that through this sacrament we may glory in the fullness of heavenly healing through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Panginoon, 